Today, we are unboxing this AEM CD7 Dash. It's got all the features you'd expect from a motorsport level data logger, plus it interfaces to almost every ECU on the market, including the one that's probably in your factory vehicle. Oh, and you might have noticed, not Andre. I'm Zach, the new wiring guy here at HPA. Let's get into this thing. It's a seven inch full color dash display with integrated buttons and warning LEDs. The screen is readable in direct sunlight, has an anti-glare coating, and the housing has an integrated shade hood. They offer the dash in four spec levels. They're all the same seven inch form factor and housing, but you can get it with or without an optional logging package and with or without an optional vehicle dynamics and GPS track mapping package. The unit they've sent us here is the top of the line one, so it has both the GPS track mapping options and vehicle dynamics. AEM is aiming at an interesting spot in the market with this dash. They've made the decision to not include any direct sensor interfaces on the device, but only read data received on either of its two CAN bus ports. This might initially seem like a bit of a limitation, but I think it actually makes quite a lot of sense. Most of the vehicles this dash will be installed in are going to have one or more ECUs already reading all the required sensor data. That data can then be sent via CAN bus to the dash where it's displayed to the driver, or if you've purchased the option, logged. The two CAN bus ports are independently configurable for transmission speed, meaning you can read data from a one megabit bus, most common on other performance automotive electronics, but also interface to an OBD2 500 kilobit bus in a factory vehicle at the same time. AEM have made a major push here to make the CD7 able to read data from any other device on a CAN bus network and not be locked into their specific data format. They supply literally hundreds of predefined CAN bus data templates for other automotive electronic devices, along with allowing you to completely customize input data channels and how they're received. This is really great to see and reflects the way a lot of the players in the aftermarket performance industry are going. Also worth noting is that AEM has optional CAN termination resistors on both channels, and for this I say a massive thank you. When you're wiring in a device to a CAN bus network, it can be a real struggle to try and obey all the protocol standards. If every device had switchable termination resistors, this job would be much easier. Ah, printed documentation. I love getting printed documentation. I love being able to download it too, but uh, when you're out next to the car and your laptop battery is flat, this can be really handy. We can see the dash comes packaged uh, in nicely cut foam, so it's pretty tight in there and should survive transport uh, anywhere in the world unscathed. Cards on the table, we have actually had this box open before as we needed to take some promotional shots. Uh, but the dash was originally supplied with a protective film over the screen, so if you particularly like to remove those, as I do, uh, you're not going to miss out. The dash has a satisfyingly chunky construction. Uh, it's got a little bit of heft to it, but not really unreasonably so. It looks like a die-cast metal case with a black textured powder-coated finish, so that's a very race car. It is rated to IP65 ceiling, so while it's not submersible, um, it is fine to install in a boat or a UTV where it might get splashed or a little bit muddy. The buttons on the side are a textured rubber and they're pleasingly tactile, so you should be able to reliably press them even if you've got racing gloves on. The one on the right here does feel slightly squishier than the one on the left, but I suspect that'll come right with a bit of use. The shift LEDs are located above the screen here, and we've got a warning LED on the left and an alarm LED on the right. The colors of these LEDs are fixed, uh, so the shift LEDs come up in a two green, two yellow, three blue arrangement. The warning LED is yellow and the alarm LED is red. Would have been nice to see AEM use RGB LEDs here so we could configure the colors for our application, but they have let us configure the brightness of all the LEDs and uh, they've put nice diffuse lenses on them, so you should be able to see them easily without them being too glary. On the back of the device we have four isolated rubber mounts, uh, the template for which is available in the documentation or downloadable from AEM's website, so you can make sure you get your mounting spot on. Uh, we have a mini USB connector for configuration and logging download, and a DTM12 connector. Uh, for power supply connections and CAN bus connections. I do like to see a DTM12 connector here because uh, though we all love an Autosport connector, they are really pricey. The DTM12 is uh, easily and cheaply available, they're reliable, uh, they're easy to pin, and you can get bootable versions if you need that extra bit of sealing uh, if you're installing it into a boat or UTV for example. So, the other bits and pieces in the box. 
Uh, first up here we've got the DTM12 connector which AEM have broken out into their AEM net 4 pin pinout for us, that's power ground and uh, can high and can low. They've also broken out the second CAN bus connection to a DTM2 connector for us. There's also a couple of flying leads coming out of this 12 pin connector, uh, one of which is for putting the dash into night mode which is uh, another uh, array of brightness settings that you can configure. Uh, the other is for lap beacon timing, so you can do lap timing with the dash even if you don't have the GPS options. Next cable we've got here is uh, AEM's 4 pin pinout, but broken out into flying leads for power and ground. When I first looked at this cable I thought oh, it's a bit cheap of them to use tape on the ends, but uh, I think they've just done that for packaging to keep it all together, um, because you can unravel this and you can run the other two wires through it if you do choose to use them. When this gets installed in the vehicle I would probably end up uh, trimming it to length and sealing that off with a bit of glue heat shrink. We've got a standard USB mini cable and because we've optioned, uh, we've got the optional logging package they've included a USB extension cable so this breaks out the uh, USB mini plug on the back of the device to a flush mount USB mini plug. Uh, this means if you install the dash in a location where the USB interface is a little bit tricky to get to, you can install this cable and uh, extend it out to somewhere um, that's much easier to access, because you'll probably be accessing it quite a lot, downloading logs for example. Ah, this is a really cool piece of gear. It's the optional VDM, or Vehicle Dynamics Module. It's a 3-axis gyrometer, a 3-axis accelerometer, and GPS unit, all built into one pretty tidy little package. It gives you information as to the pitch, roll, and yaw of the vehicle, along with acceleration data uh, along the car's three axis, so that's front to back, side to side, and up and down. This data is pretty critical when you're trying to dial in a suspension setup, and then of course for verifying any changes you've made to a suspension setup. It's also a GPS module, so it gives you real-time track mapping and position data, which is really, really handy when you're looking at that accelerometer and gyroscope data, because you can tell exactly what corner the car was in at the time. They have broken the wiring out into the AEM net pinout, and given you both a male and a female connector, which is great, as it'll make it really easy to interface into uh, any part of the wiring harness in the vehicle. Uh, the unit has a status LED that gives you information as to the current GPS signal lock. The mounting of these units does need to be reasonably specific. Uh, you need to have them as close to the center of the vehicle as possible for your uh, gyroscope data to be accurate, and you really need to have them mounted face up and in line uh, with the axis of the vehicle, so this arrow pointing towards the front of the car for your accelerometer data to be valid. There is a little bit of flexibility in the mounting position, but um, the closer you can get it to uh, the optimal position, the better your data is going to be. There's also a GPS antenna with a pretty good length of cable on it. These are magnetic and go on the roof or hood of the car, somewhere with a clear, unobstructed view of the sky, uh, so they can get a good lock on GPS satellites. If you've got a vehicle that has an aluminium hood or um, roof, you can mount them using double-sided tape. If you've got a vehicle that's got a composite roof or hood, things do get a little bit more complicated as you do need to provide a metal ground plane underneath them. AEM recommend a, a circle of sheet metal no less than 5 inches in diameter. I found aluminium tape to actually be a pretty good solution for this. It works quite well and it's removable if you're ever uh, changing the system to a different vehicle or removing the system from the vehicle altogether. And we've got some Velcro. This will be for mounting the VDM and uh, because I've broken out the connectors to nice common DTM 4 pins, it would uh, be a pretty good way of uh, mounting it in an easily removable fashion so you could share it between vehicles. If you were putting the VDM into another vehicle you wouldn't even need to have AEM electronics in there as they do provide data on the VDM's CAN bus output format, so uh, interfacing it to any other automotive electronics should be pretty easy. That's all the physical stuff out of the way, and I think AEM have done pretty well. It's all robust, well documented, and easy to connect to. What can make or break these systems though is the software interface. AEM have developed a program called Dash Design for configuring the display. I haven't had enough time to really delve into its depths, but skimming the surface has been pretty pleasant. I was able to get the dash up and running with one of their default templates, displaying data from a Link G4 Plus ECU in only a matter of minutes. Their supplied CAN data template was pretty spot on, just needing a few tweaks here and there to the conversion side of things as we use a metric system here in New Zealand. One of the first things I noticed is that the supplied gauge templates are pretty comprehensive, but if you want, you can completely configure the display to your liking. Gauge design, position, text, colour, background images, it's all on the table for you to modify if you like. 
I bet it would be a real rabbit's nest to head down designing a gauge setup completely from scratch, but it would be pretty cool to have a display you know is completely unique to your vehicle, or make it match the rest of the factory gauges in the car for a nice integrated install. Top points to AEM here for providing that level of flexibility. It's not an easy thing to do, let alone be prepared to provide support for it down the track. The input data channel configuration seems to be just as flexible too. You can create new data channels easily, name them as you like, and completely define how they receive their data from the CAN bus. You can set up global conversion functions which can be reused on any incoming data channel, meaning you don't need to do the conversion manually for each channel you create. That being said, AEM have a massive library of CAN data templates for popular aftermarket electronics, so it would pay to have a quick browse of it before you commit time to building your own. Really, the software side of things would need a complete and pretty lengthy video in and of itself to do it justice. But so far, I haven't struck anything that I wanted to do that I couldn't find a way of doing. AEM have had a pretty good balance of making the dash easy to get up and running quickly, but providing the flexibility to know you'll always be able to accommodate any future modifications to the vehicle. There you have it, the AEM CD7 dash with optional logging and vehicle dynamics package in this instance. Overall, I'm impressed with the unit, and I don't think anyone purchasing this device is going to be disappointed.